All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about Addison's disease. This is one of our two different types of cortisol problem disorders where cortisol is going out of whack. It's either too high or too low. So with Addison's disease, it is hypocortisolism. So I remember that because Addison has an O in it. So hypo, which means low. Cushing's is hyper, so that's high. So this is just how we want to make sure we remember the difference between the two. So remember, because it is cortisol, cortisol comes from the adrenal glands. And so Remember, we have the two parts of the adrenal gland. We have the medulla, so that's the more inner part. This is where our catecholamines hang out. So that's our epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine. All those things are created in the adrenal medulla. And then in the adrenal cortex, that is where we have cortisol produced as well as a couple other things. But cortisol is the main thing that's hanging out in the cortex. I think cortisol, cortex, that helps me remember where it's coming from so I didn't get confused. And then the medulla is the, you know, uh, epinephrine and everything. And so when it comes to uh, what's going on with Addison's disease, it is a decreased production of cortisol. So remember either that's the adrenal gland itself is like, I'm just not going to produce cortisol for some reason. That's primary. If it was the anterior pituitary gland releasing ACTH, so that's adrenal corticotropic hormone. And if that's the one that stimulates the adrenal medulla to do things. So if the pituitary gland has a problem with secreting ACTH, and that's secondary problems with the hypocortisolism. So that's a little confusing. All you need to know is that not enough cortisol is being produced in order to carry out the normal functions of the body that are associated with using cortisol. So it's gonna affect the body's cardiovascular system, metabolic and endocrine systems, and then also have some issues with regulating fluid and electrolytes, just due to the fact that this is what causes a lot of the GI distress that we're gonna see associated with this condition. So it can mess pretty much everything up. So what is the etiology of it? So a lot of times it's gonna be autoimmune or idiopathic. So this does have an autoimmune component to it, which means that it can just be the body just starts saying, hey, I'm just not gonna produce cortisol. And it's like, well, that's gonna cause a problem or it could just be idiopathic, just shows up randomly, no known cause. And so this will address, uh, result in adrenal cortical deficiency. And so that's just a fancy way of saying that the adrenal glands are not producing enough cortisol. So small amounts of cortisol are being produced. So hypocortisolism, because it's Addison's disease with the O's. That's how I remember it. Made it sick in the head and it never went away. Sometimes the immune system ends up attacking the adrenal cortex. So if it is an autoimmune component, understand it's because the adrenal cortex, the cortex produces produce cortisol. That's where the problem is. Other problems or causes of Addison's disease could be trauma to the adrenal glands in some sort of way some sort of destruction of the adrenal glands, problems in some sort of nature. Infection can cause problems with the adrenal glands. Any sort of stress, it could be emotional stress. So just the stress of like, you know, your job, maybe you went through a bad breakup, maybe you're grieving the loss of somebody, like some sort of emotional stressor on you can definitely cause problems with cortisol production. A lot of times it goes higher, but sometimes it could go autoimmune and go the other way and go lower with Addison's disease. Um, it could be physical stress. So like, let's say overexertion with like either exercise with work or um, even like trauma, physical overexertion when it comes to, you know, being in a traumatic car accident or something like that, that kind of goes hand in hand. Um, and then adrenal artery embolism or thrombus. So anything that's blocking blood flow to the adrenal glands will make them not work. So we'll see less cortisol being produced because the adrenal glands are not getting any nutrients. So therefore they stop working and then any sort of adrenal hemorrhage. So yeah, if blood flow is not getting to the adrenal glands, then we're going to get having problems with that. So we can see how all of these things would end up causing a decrease in amount of the production of cortisol, which is essentially what the definition of Addison's disease is. So what does it look like? I have this nice picture on the side here because this affects a lot of things. So hyperpigmentation is one of the biggest things that we see associated with it because it's a big visual that we can be like, oh, that looks different. What's going on with that? So hyperpigmentation tends to happen in areas that are exposed to the sun. So like the face, the arms, the legs, the chest and shoulders and every that kind of area. Anywhere that like, if you're seeing your patient walk into the clinic wearing just like shorts and a t-shirt, all of those spots are more prone to getting a like sun exposure. These are also the spots that are most common for developing skin cancer. So these areas end up getting hyperpigmentated. So it's just kind of more brownish discoloration of the skin. Looks almost like a reverse rosacea kind of thing. Like instead of being red, it's like 
brownish colored. Um, you'll see a lot of the you know cardiovascular problems that we talked about with like the low blood pressure weakness and also weight loss. That's another one that's associated with um, Addison's disease is weight loss. And that's due to the fact of the weakness, fatigue, uh, the low blood pressure is going to cause the syncope that we're seeing over here. And um, because remember with hypercortisolism, we'll have weight gain with hypo, we'll have weight loss. Generally, the symptoms end up being kind of opposite of each other. And so we'll see in the GI distress kind of things that are going on, we'll see pain in the abdomen. You'll have like maybe uh, abdominal distension. They start having like a rounded belly kind of thing. You'll see the nausea, vomiting, constipation, or diarrhea. All of those problems are associated with electrolyte imbalances, which we talked about at the beginning is kind of what's going on when it comes to uh, the lack of cortisol, it's going to affect your electrolytes levels. And so that's going to cause a patient to become dehydrated and stuff of that nature. So they either de become dehydrated and get constipated or get nauseous and vomit everything out. And that's how they're getting, um, you know, problems with their electrolyte imbalances. Um, you'll also see that the patient might have vitiligo. So that's pictured in this picture down here. And so that is where you have a, um, depigmentation of the skin. And so you can see these areas around here just becomes like more pale and they lose all their melanin. And so this is just something that happens because it's affecting the skin. And that's kind of what's going on with that one. So these are the things that are associated with that. Um, myalgia is just another way of saying just general pains and um, fatigue and everything like that. That's just kind of another way that we want to talk about this. We'll also see like if they develop any of these symptoms down here of like a fever, uh, if they're passing out, that's not good at all. We definitely need help. Uh, any sort of convulsions due to electrolyte imbalances, hypoglycemia, passing out because their blood sugar's tanking, hyponatremia, again, low sodium. We're seeing that that's going to cause problems with electrolyte imbalances. They need fluid IVs, of severe vomiting and diarrhea. These are all things that we're seeing this, that we're like, okay, we need to do something. And so how do we treat it? We as PTAs need to watch for any detrimental side effects and take appropriate action. So all of these conditions over here, like fever, syncope and all that stuff, like we're going to, you know, assess, take care of the patient as, as we can, while we also get some help. So like severe vomiting, like we need to get a nurse to help administer fluid. So they don't like get super dehydrated, monitoring our vitals, like our SPO2, if the patient becomes cyanotic, because that is another condition that is associated with it. They could become cyanotic and have difficulty breathing. So just checking on SPO2, if the patient has, becomes unconscious because they had a syncope episode, like we're calling for help as we're elevating the patient's legs above their heart. So these are all things that we're going to do for the patient if they're in trouble. Generally, our patient, if they're not in trouble, they're going to be on medication to help manage symptoms and then increase their cortisol levels to the appropriate level that it's supposed to be. Um, for us during therapy, again, watching for detrimental side effects, taking appropriate action as needed, evaluating the situation, being like, okay, what are we going to do? And then during therapy, while we're treating the patient, you know, energy conservation techniques, uh, frequent breaks and everything, monitoring vitals, making sure we're not overexerting the patient or causing any additional myalgias when it comes to, you know, how they're going to feel later after therapy. So keywords, hypocortisolism. So remember hypo, low. Um, low ACTH levels, that's adrenocorticotropic hormone, um, which that would be coming from the pituitary gland, which that would, if it's low, the adrenal gland will be low. Um, any sort of hyperpigmentation or vitiligo that should be leaning towards that, uh, towards uh, Addison's disease. Fatigue, weakness, and myalgias, those are all like another, some other keywords that are kind of pointing towards, okay, like this is definitely going to uh, be something where like our cortisol levels are starting to be affected. Uh, any sort of trauma or destruction of the adrenal glands, like this is basically like the bread and butter of like, yeah, this is going to be like Addison's disease or something like that. Like the adrenal glands are messed up. We're seeing hypo of whatever. General, if a certain gland is messed up, we're going to see hypo because it's not working. Then it has an autoimmune component. And I also would like to add to this slide and I'm going to put it in the PowerPoint when I link this below this video, uh, the weight loss. So less likely to see weight gain, we're more likely to see weight loss. So let's get into our sample question. A physical therapist assistant is treating a patient in an outpatient facility with a hypercortisolism pathology. Which of the following symptoms is most commonly associated with hypercortisolism? One, purple striae on abdomen. Two, hyperpigmentation of the skin. Three, cyanosis. Or four, vitiligo. And I'll give you guys a second to think about that.
So the answer is number one, purple striae abdomen. Why? Because I'm asking about hypercortisolism. So I know I just spent this whole entire presentation talking about hypocortisolism. This is because when the board is asking you a question about either Addison's disease or Cushing syndrome, they're going to throw them in together. They're going to try to confuse you. They're going to be like, I know they're both cortisol problems. What's going on? Which one's which? I want you guys to have that higher level of thinking that you can understand that. So you might have looked at this and been like, oh, hyperpigmentation. Yeah. And then you're like, you hear vitiligo and you're like, wait a minute, both of those things were that. What's going on? Hypercortisolism. So that is our Cushing syndrome. So if you're confused on that, definitely go watch the video on that. It's super helpful for explaining everything. Um, and you'll see like the purple striae on their abdomen, the moon face, the buffalo hump on their back, the increased weight gain, fatty deposits in different areas. Those are all associated with Cushing syndrome. And so hyperpigmentation is more Addison's disease, hypocortisolism, cyanosis, hypo, vitiligo, hypo. So yeah. That's pretty much it. Make sure you read the whole question, see what it's really asking and don't get too confused because the board's going to try to trip you up. They'll try to, you know, put things that are very similar to each other. Read the question. Like for this one, if you didn't see the hyper, you would have got this question wrong. Make sure we read carefully. And I was nice. I put it twice to make sure that you guys really got it. So understanding difference between these two pathologies in order to not make any mistakes moving forward. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.